How's it going everybody? It's Krabby Boy here and today I am making a tier list of all the RS3 melee abilities. So this will include all 32 abilities including the mutated forms of all the abilities. I have these separate and I'm going to be categorizing them by S, A+, A, B, C, and D. A few of you guys might be wondering why I have A+. The reason I have A+, plus is because while I was considering this list and putting it together, there were a few abilities that I wasn't really sure if they belonged in S or A, just because of what else I had considered to be in those tiers already. And that might make more sense as we kind of get into the list here, but I have it here just as a precaution. I might end up using it, might not end up using it, it might just be for like a few situational things, but regardless, uh, I'm ready to get started. Also, I'm going to be talking about the mutated abilities immediately after their regular abilities, and how I'm going to be ranking these more is I will be ranking them because of how powerful the ability is, but also because of how, how important of an upgrade they are to melee, as you come in the very late game, so chances are these are going to place high anyway. <laughs> so let's get started. We're going to start with the first ability here. We got Slice. Uh, everybody knows what Slice is. Uh, it's the first ability everybody gets in the game. And what makes Slice great is this is an ability that everybody uses throughout the entire time as they go through melee. As if your target is stun or bound, uh, Slice, like Rack or Piercing Shot, range will do increased damage and this damage increase the maximum is the highest for any basic ability so because of that it's really strong and very powerful and definitely something you want to be using and following up with all of your stuns that you fire off and melee has some pretty good stuns thankfully so uh, because of that because of just how important slice is you're using it throughout the entirety of melee it has a lot of combo potential, it synergizes well with a lot of other abilities. I'm going to put it in A tier. I think that's a pretty good place for it. It's not the most powerful thing ever, but it is a very solid ability and it's really good. So next, we have Assault. Now I really like Assault. I think a lot of people will agree that Assault is probably one of the best melee abilities in the game. Uh, I think Assault is great because you can use it on both two-handed and dual wield as a powerful threshold. It's a channel attack, so it's going to be doing a huge amount of damage within a very concentrated amount of time. It benefits with support from Mutated Barge, which is also very helpful, and we'll get into talking about that later. Uh, and it's a very, it's usually the first threshold people use in Zerk rotations because it has a 30 second cooldown, which is a little bit longer than the rest of them, which are 20 seconds and 15 seconds for a few of them. So because of that, because of how powerful Assault is, uh, you also unlock it kind of in the mid level. So you will have access to it for a good amount of time and figure out how it works and have a good amount of time using it before you get into the higher levels. So because of that, because of how important, how flexible this ability is and how powerful it is, I'm going to put it in S tier. I think it really does belong here. It's a solid threshold. Everybody uses Assault in their, uh, in their rotations, and it can usually deal with most things on its own. Uh, I would mention stuff about like canceling Assault and stuff like that too. That is kind of like a a nice little trick you can do with it if you can pull it off and that gives it a little bump to abilities that can do little niche things like that are often very good because of those niches that they have so next we have backhand uh, backhand is a pretty simple ability it's the simple stun basic ability for melee and I think backhand just honestly because it's a stun I really do think it belongs in A um, the, it is also compared with kick, uh, but I think backhand is better for a few reasons. 
Uh, one thing, it benefits from flanking, which is huge. Being able to benefit from flanking is great. It's one of the best perks in the game, uh, and kick doesn't. Uh, so, because of just how solid this is, it's just a very reliable stun that does get some support later on. And uh, just is unlocked very early. You're going to be using this kind of all throughout melee, much like Slice. I think it belongs in A tier. I think that's a good spot for it. So next we have Decimate. Uh, Decimate is it's a pretty good ability. I, I don't think people realize how powerful of an ability Decimate is. It's a very good uh, it's a very good basic ability. And I think what makes Decimate so powerful is uh, sorry, I'm pulling up the uh, I'm pulling up the information on RS Wiki just so I have it in front of me. Um, so it is dual wielding. Uh, I think what makes Decimate so powerful is it does have very high base damage, and it does do extra damage while wearing a shield, or while your opponent's wearing a shield. The thing is, there aren't that many shield wielding opponents in the game, so you don't really benefit from that too much. I mean, the only one that really comes to mind for me is Linza the Disgraced. Uh, the big one, but people do use this in a lot of rotations because its basic ability damage is pretty good. But uh, whereas the other basic abilities synergize well or have neat things like binding and stuff like that, I kind of want to put it in B tier. That might not be fair. Maybe it does belong in A tier because it is pretty powerful. But the rest of the abilities kind of do more things or just do insane amounts of damage and i think the fact that it's kind of just more a bland ability i think it kind of belongs in b uh maybe it belongs in a if if you think it belongs in a definitely let me know in the comments below why it belongs in a and you know i i can be convinced otherwise but this is just all my own opinion so i'm gonna put decimate in b tier all right next we have the big head honcho ability of melee we have berserk i don't think anyone's gonna argue with me putting berserk in s tier uh this <laughs> where do, where do you even begin with berserk i mean this thing is this is probably the best ultimate ability for berserk it allows you to increase all damage you're dealing by 100 percent while taking 50 percent more damage which people will say is a perfectly fine trade-off with how important dps is in the game right now it's also very important with melee because DPS is usually translating to things like healing or things like scrimshaw vampirism. And you're often starting all of your big DPS rotations with Zerk. You're, you know, equipping that Ring of Vigor, you Zerk, you drink that Adrenaline Pot, you bring up, you do a few more basic abilities, then you go into Assault, then you go into the rest of your abilities. Depending on what you're doing, of course. Uh, Zerk is a fantastic ultimate ability. It kind of unfortunately warps all the other ultimate abilities around it, with the exception of, I guess, one or two. Um, but yeah, I, I think this thing belongs squarely in S tier. That's a very good spot for it. All right, next we have Bladed Dive. Bladed Dive, I think, was really slept on when it came out. I don't think people realized just how powerful this thing is. I think they looked at Salt the Wound and was like, oh, this thing will be good. But then Salt the Wound didn't end up becoming that good. And Bladed Dive ended up becoming really important. In fact, this ability is so good that it's not only used in combat, it's used outside of combat and skilling, like Surge and, and I guess some instances Escape. Um, Melee has a lot of very good movement abilities, and Bladed Dive is extremely good. People will often wield two-handed weapon or dual-wielding weapons while skilling if they can, just to be able to Bladed Dive around. It also makes things like doing clues and stuff better, and I guess if we want to focus on it in the combat, in you know just for melee combat, and stick outside of skilling, um, it does uh allow you to close in on your targets fast while doing damage also if you clo if you kill something with bladed dive after bladed diving to it it resets the cooldown of bladed dive so 
this ability is great and it's great even outside of melee so i think it belongs up there with with the big boys in s tier um i guess if you want to take this list as a melee abilities in combat specifically application i think it still belongs in s tier because being able to move around not only move around like you are in surge and share a different cooldown but also be able to move extremely precisely is extremely helpful extremely uh, especially in uh like higher level pvm scenarios where where you move and where you stand is going to mean the difference between life and death in a few situations and having something like bladed dive to be able to get you out of there and get you somewhere exactly where you need to be is extremely helpful especially at places like i guess farago rax uh and just in general slayer just like being able to move around quicker and kill things faster is going to make your tasks go by faster so i think it's a solid ability it definitely belongs in s tier next uh we got one of the weird ones next we have blood tendrils um blood tendrils i really don't know what to think about blood tendrils now blood tendrils actually before spear of annihilation i think definitely would have been an easy c or d tier ability um but they do benefit from the masterwork spear of annihilation which uh gives you an additional two hits um they do do less damage but they actually don't damage you which is pretty interesting um and honestly I really do feel like this ability kind of needs to be buffed because its whole thing compared to like the other tendrils is it has like that strong initial hit and then it's uh your damage for yourself after all the initial all the other hits after the initial hit and even though it does benefit from the spear of annihilation it's a pretty niche instance and it does do a decent amount of damage. I, I guess maybe it does belong in B tier. I was kind of considering putting it in C tier because it only really meets these criteria with the Spear of Annihilation. Um, because there are just other, there are just so many other better thresholds to use than this thing. But I guess like it is something that I guess you could fit in late on your ability rotation depending on where you are. Um, maybe it's... I don't know i'm tempted to put it in d tier because like i feel like i'm doing a similar thing with what i did with decimate where maybe it's a bit stronger than i think it is but i don't know i mean i'm i think there are just so many better abilities than blood tendrils and it's definitely not coming in early on any rotations. It's not like a priority ability. It's definitely it's definitely not something you want to be using as often as possible because it damages you. Um, and you do have to wait until level seventy five to get it. And by that point, you have a pretty good amount of other already solid threshold abilities. So I think it belong. I think I'm gonna put it in C tier. I would like to see it buffed just a tiny bit. I think if it did just a little bit more damage um or maybe did something cool with this bleed i mean it, it's like it's blood tendrils so like i i would have imagined it maybe having like a healing effect to it because it's like blood magic i guess but i don't know you know may, maybe maybe not maybe it's expending more blood like blood forfeit or ruby bolts and you're spending more to do more damage but i think it goes in c tier um next we have cleave uh cleave is definitely an ability that i think would definitely go in a plus because it is definitely better than a lot of abilities that i think belong in a specifically because aoe damage with melee is huge being because you have things like the noxious scythe which makes slayer tasks you know into confetti when you pull that thing out um anything that has an aoe range is going to be able to benefit heavily from being used with halberds and even if you're not if even if you don't have a halberd yet 
two-handed weapons just there there are a plethora of very solid two-handed weapons and cleave being able to hit multiple targets at once is extremely good for slayer and if you have a knock scythe or anything close to that like a i don't know like a dragon rider lance or something like that cleave is going to be really important it's an ability you're going to want to be using pretty often definitely early on if you're in like a revolution or something you want to definitely have this thing pretty early and being used often since it is an aoe aoe's are fantastic abilities and them being aoe's alone give them high merit so i think cleave it's not super powerful so it doesn't really go in s but it is better than i think it's better than a tier so a plus is a pretty good spot for it so i did end up using this so i think having this is a pretty good idea all right next we have just a normal barge um normal barge by itself i didn't end up using it a whole lot kind of going through melee um however i think what it does do is pretty good i think being able to clear your binds is really helpful especially if you have like freedom and anticipate on cooldown already it allows you to move within one square of uh, one tile of your opponent and it also stuns your opponent so you can set them up for a combo attack with something like slice or destroy if you have the adrenaline um and i think it's a pretty useful utility at the very least utility to break out of uh you know stuns and binds it could mean the difference between life and death especially in a boss that has very heavy stun heavy you know stun and bind heavy mechanics uh so i think standalone barge belongs in a uh, it's stun it clears you of stuns and it allows you to move within one square of your target it's not something you're going to want to be using super often but the utility of it i don't think can be underestimated maybe it could go in b tier i guess there's an argument for it to be in b tier but i think a tier is fine given what it does now mutated barge on the other hand is an s tier ability it's a this is an extremely powerful upgrade to barge um when this ability came out it really defined like a whole new like a whole new play style uh <laughs> A whole new play style to barge and a whole and like a whole new way of just going about melee combat with how it changes barge and how it interacts with melee uh so barge or mutated barge greater barge is ha, does all the same things that normal barge does it instantly move within one tile of your target you clear your bounce status it binds your target for six seconds and you gain 10% damage for every 0.6 seconds since your last attack. And if it has been 4.8 seconds since your last attack, you gain an additional bonus, which will cause your next channel ability, so that would be like Assault or Fury, to become a damage over time attack. And obviously, probably the, the best use of this would be Assault. So at the start of your Zerk rotation, you could wait a few seconds, I guess, and then greater barge for the bonus and then turn your assault into a damage over time bleed for a lot of damage because ble bleeds are very important especially in melee because they allow you to rack up insane amounts of damage over time and mutated barge is definitely 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 a upgrade over barge it's awesome it's definitely an S tier ability. It's one of the best upgrades for melee. And I think it belongs here. I think a lot of people would agree that it belongs here. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> now we have um now we have balance strike. Oh man. Uh where where to begin with how great balance strike is? Clearly the S tier ability. I mean I don't know why people use Berserk when balance strike is in the game. I mean, it's the almighty equalizer, you know? You, you equal out your percentage up to a cap of life points between you and your opponent. That's great, you know? That, that has so many applications, you know, to hell with DPS. Who needs that? <laughs> but no, um, obviously, I, 
I really feel bad about this, but Balance Strike is not a good ability. It, I can see where they were going with Balance Strike. It is a cool idea, because um, if anyone in here watching this video is Pokemon fan, uh, there's a move in that called Pain Split, which kind of functions similarly to how Balance Strike works in the sense that you basically equal out your HP with your opponent. Now, Balance Strike only does this up to a cap, and yeah, you could get a, a cheeky heal and do a lot of damage with Balance Strike. The issue is, first of all, it's an ultimate ability, so that adrenaline usage is getting compared with, you know, Berserk, Meteor Strike, all the other thresholds, uh, Overpower, um, and genuinely, the healing ultimates aren't really all that good. People would much rather use that adrenaline on DPS abilities and DPS ultimates, like Berserk and Death Swiftness and Sunshine, because they equate to better damage over time, and they're a much more effective use of your adrenaline than a healing than a healing ability is. Now, if you're in a desperate situation where you need to use this, like if you're low on HP and you're out of food and you can't zerk because you're on low HP, then yeah, I guess you could use Balance Strike to get a cheeky heal, but that's only if your health point percentage is lower than your opponent's, which won't always be the case. And if the difference isn't that much, you're not going to heal back very much. and if you ever use it in a situation where you have a higher HP percentage than your opponent, you will take damage and your opponent will heal, which is not really what you want to be doing in combat. I think a situation where this could be beneficial could exist in like a stalling situation where maybe you need to let them have HP or keep the HP at like a certain amount and maybe Balance Strike would help out with that. But it just doesn't compare with all the rest of the ultimate abilities in throughout Melee. I mean, first of all, it has to compete with Berserk. It has to compete with pretty much everything else for Adrenaline. And it doesn't really offer that much. If the healing, if healing from an ultimate was a big deal, then... Rejuvenation and Guthix's Blessing and Ice Prison would see a lot more use than they do. Ice Prison does see use, but it, that's a, that helps groups. That, uh, sorry, that helps in a group setting because it can benefit multiple people. And it's still not the best thing to use. It's probably still better to use DPS at the end of the day, just because that's kind of how the game is. But I think, unfortunately, for Balance Strike, it goes in D tier. It's not really a good ability. In fact, it's the only ability on here that actually hurts you. It or can hurt you more than it does damage. I was going to say it's the only ability on here that hurts you. I just remember about Blood Tendril. But, um, and I guess technically Berserk would be debuff. But yeah, Balance Strike is not a good ability. And it definitely goes in D tier. Sorry, bud. Maybe you'll get some help in the future. And on the complete opposite side of the paradigm, we now have Destroy. Um, Destroy is a fantastic ability. In fact, it is so amazing that people actually run dual wield combo or run dual wield switches specifically to use Destroy on DPS rotations. And Destroy is fantastic. You know, I, I'm sure you guys know what Destroy is. It's the rapid fire of melee. It applies a stun, it does a very fast amount of high damage, it's a great ability to use on Berserk, and people will switch to dual wield just to use this ability. It does a great amount of single target damage, and it's fantastic. I think it's one of the best thresholds, one of the best threshold abilities in melee, and definitely belongs in S tier. Alright. Next, we have Dismember. Uh, Dismember is a Dismember is a bleed, and as I mentioned earlier, bleeds are very important in melee as they help achieve high levels of DPS. 
Now, it will benefit from a lot of things, a lot of bleed support in the game. Things like the Spear of Annihilation. Uh, and bleeds themselves have very interesting interactions with damage multipliers and damage buffs because they only receive damage buffs from a certain amount of things. However, this member manages to stay super relevant because it's a very consistent, you unlock it very early, so you have access to it for a while, and it just allows you to throw it on and then start doing any other ability after it, and you're just going to be racking up more damage over time by having this bleed go off and slowly chipping away their health. And it's definitely something you want to be using as often as you can, but it's not the most powerful thing on the block. Kind of like Cleave. So I think for that reason, I'm going to put it in A+. It's a very, it's a great ability. It's definitely one of the better basics of the game. Um, I just don't think it belongs in S tier alone with what it has. Uh, but definitely A+. Plus. It's definitely better than a good amount of A. It, a, better, a <laughs> it's definitely better than a lot of the other abilities in A. And it's definitely one you want to be using pretty often. Alright, next we got Flurry. Now, Flurry on its own isn't that great. I don't personally like this. And I do kind of see what they were going for. They were, you know, I guess this was kind of an effort to give dual wield an AoE ability. But the thing is, is two-handed just does AoE way better than dual wield does. Two-handed has way better abilities for it, like Cleave. Whirl, whirlwind quake it has just a bunch of it has not only more but just better abilities and if you're using dual wield primarily doing aoe damage really isn't going to be your focus um so for that reason i i don't think it's a super important threshold to be using often i guess like if everything else is on cooldown and this is the only thing you really have, I guess you can use it, but I, I think it goes in B tier. I don't think it's terrible. I just think there are a lot of things that are better than it, and it just is kind of outperformed by two-handed within its own archetype of melee. And I think it can work in a few situations. Like, if you need to quickly use it to get rid of some, you know, some, I guess, quest mobs or something that were around you, you could use that to quickly deal with them and then go back to dealing single target damage with dual wield. But that's really it. I think it kind of goes in B. Uh, now, Greater Flurry, I think, definitely is higher. Greater Flurry, I, I do like kind of what they did with this in the sense that they turned it into... Well, first of all, they made it better to use against a single target, which is great. And they also gave it a nice little effect where, you know, it can help reduce the cooldown of Berserk. Which, everybody knows, Berserk is the ability that you want to be using pretty often for all your DPS rotations. So, being able to reduce its cooldown is pretty solid. It's definitely something you want to be using pretty often. I don't know if it's S tier. I, I'm not sure. I, I, I think there's an argument to be made that the upgrade does turn it into, like, it feels like that, but I'm not sure if I can put this in S tier. Maybe, this, again, this is why I created A+. This is definitely better than A. Like, it's definitely better than anything I would put in A, but I don't know if it's S tier. Um, maybe it is just because it reduces the cooldown of Berserk, and it's something you, you do want to be using when you can. Um, yeah, you know what? I, I'm going to put it in, in S tier. I think it's pretty powerful. I think the upgrade is nice. I think it, it kind of puts it in line with what dual wielding is, because dual wield should be you know, better at single target damage. It, that's, that's its whole thing. So kind of bringing it more in line with what dual wield should be, is a very nice upgrade and definitely turns it into something a lot more viable than the original Flurry. Alright, next we got 
backhand. Or forceful backhand, sorry. Uh, forceful backhand, it's a stun, a threshold stun for melee. And uh, it does benefit from flanking support, which is very good. And I think it's definitely a threshold that you want to be using kind of in the middle to the end of a rotation. It does a pretty consistent hit. It hits pretty hard. And it's a bind, you know. It can do... <laughs> it, it, you know, being able to bind your opponent is extremely helpful in this. So, I think... I think it goes. In, I think I can put it in A because it also inter, it interacts well with slice. You know, slice can go off of it, um, and it benefits from flanking. Uh, whereas you know, its other equivalent, much like backhand, um, its equivalent does not. So yeah, I think going in A is pretty fair. I don't really know if it goes in A plus. I, I don't. I don't think it does. Uh, I think A is a pretty good spot for it. All right, now we have Frenzy. Now Frenzy, I don't know about Frenzy because Frenzy. So the thing about Frenzy and the rest of the melee ultimate abilities is it's really hard to kind of figure out how powerful they are or how good they are because a lot of them are just kind of well a lot of ultimates in the game right now are kind of just outclassed by the big three so frenzy is the melee equivalent to unload which is already not a popular ability for range and it does have very high damage output it is basically a ultimate channel attack uh essentially like a like a flurry on steroids pretty much but the issue is is that's the only thing it can do and it's an ultimate ability and it does you know have a high amount of you know burst damage in that 4.8 seconds that it's active but it's just not good compared to a lot of the other ultimates there's not a lot of situations where you want to use this thing this thing specifically over the rest unless i guess you were going for like a specific play style or you had to use a specific mechanic the only thing that you know i guess is kind of coming to mind is i know pvp is kind of you know dead pretty much but being able to do a high amount of very powerful burst damage in a short amount of time i guess would be good in a pvp setting but even then i don't believe people use this in pvp like ever and honestly this needs kind of a buff it needs to do more than it does to be worthy of an ultimate and you also unlock it very late you can lock it in the 80s so you already have berserk by this time so i think because it kind of just needs some help and just really isn't that great of an ultimate ability compared to the rest, I'm going to put it in C tier. It's not terrible. You can use it, but it's not the best, and there are definitely better things to use. Uh, so next, we have Havoc. Havoc is a gr is pretty reliable ability. It's a just a very solid dual wield ability. Um, it does disable protection prayers in PvP because it's only real selling point, but that doesn't really matter. It does pretty consistent damage, and it's a very simple dual wield ability, and you're going to kind of be using this thing pretty much all throughout melee, again, kind of like the rest of the things in A. Um, I think it goes in A. Uh... I think it's a pretty decent ability. I don't think it's anything overly special, but it's definitely not bad. It's just a pretty okay ability. Maybe the fact that it is just an okay ability could put it in B, but a lot of people use Havoc, so I think it belongs in A. All right, now we have Hurricane. Hurricane is actually the <laughs> is actually the ability uh, that first made me think of 
you know, would I put it in S or A tier? Um, Hurricane is a very fantastic threshold for two-handed. Um, it's two very powerful hits that are AoE. And being able to do a pretty high hit to a lot of AoE targets, especially if you're using this thing in conjunction with something like Berserk, is really good. But that's kind of the only thing it does. Is it's kind of just a big AoE, well, it's two big AoE hits. Um, you do want to be using it, definitely during every rotation, but I don't think it's S tier. I don't think it's like the biggest thing on the block. So I think I'm going to put it in A tier. I think that's a pretty solid spot for it to be. Uh, next we have Kick. Uh, I'll kind of put this pretty bluntly. There's very little reason to use Kick and its equivalent over Backhand and Forceful Backhand for a few reasons. Uh, the first is that the Backhand abilities benefit from flanking, which is huge. Uh, being able to benefit from flanking is imperative it really does a lot of you know increase into your damage uh, and the kick abilities especially kick it does knock your target back a tile which is not bad you can use it in conjunction with slaughter to do the increased damage but when you get later on into higher level pvm you're running into more things that you can't kick back or things that are too big for you to kick back and you usually just walk your bleeds anyway. It's not too much more effort to click under your target. Um, so for that, I'm going to kind of just put it in B tier. It's not horrible, super power crept in any way, but the backhand abilities are just kind of better than it. All right, now we have Massacre. Now, Massacre is kind of unfortunately in the same problem that Frenzy's in in the sense that Massacre does do a pretty decently strong initial hit. Um, and then it does a bleed. That is a pretty strong bleed. It is, uh, by base you know power, stronger than Slaughter's bleed. But the problem is, is it doesn't benefit from the moving increases the bleed damage. And again, it's... An ultimate ability so it has to compete with everything else for adrenaline and kind of like frenzy i think this thing just needs to do more it needs to have a more specific use why would uh, kind of like frenzy you know why why would you use these two specific abilities over over berserk we'll start with, you can start with berserk and then you can trickle it down to all the rest of them um I just think these two abilities specifically need some help. I think they need a little bit of a buff. And, you know, I know Berserk kind of has the ultimate, the melee ultimate spot on lock. So maybe that kind of shines some light on the state of these two abilities because they are pretty much useless, especially in later levels of PVM. But Massacre, it's not terrible, so it doesn't go in D tier, but... It just is super power crept and doesn't really... You also unlock it at level 66, which isn't bad, but that's also, I believe, the level you unlock Berserk as well. Um, I'm, I'm checking this right now. Uh, actually, no, you unlock Berserk at 42. So you've already unlocked Berserk before this ability. So there's very little reason to do it. I guess if you really specifically wanted to bleed your opponent for a powerful bleed and you couldn't move them, then sure, you can use Massacre, but that's that's kind of it. It belongs in C tier. All right, next we have Fury, the basic channel ability. Uh, Fury is great. It also, like Concentrated Blast, every hit adds a 5% chance to increase your critical hit chance. Now, most people will cancel Fury, so they won't get the full 15% that it provides. Rather, they'll just get the 10%. Um, oh, I'm sorry, not critical hit chance, but to force a critical hit. So, I guess it is critical hit chance, but you know what I mean. The The forcing will be important with when we talk about Greater Fury. But 
Fury is definitely a solid ability. You definitely want to be working it into your rotation in some way because it also benefits itself whenever it hits. So the 5% will add to the next hit of Fury and the 10% will add to the next hit of Fury. But a lot of people cancel this hit and a lot of people use it in conjunction with Greater Barge. Um, so it does have a niche kind of being by itself when used with Greater Barge. But... Uh, Greater Fury, on the other hand, is, I'm kind of want to, I, I don't know if it goes up in S. I think a lot of people are already probably turning heads with um, Greater Flurry being up in S. But I will say, I, I do like how Greater Fury changes, because one thing I've noticed with the mutated abilities is... It really, especially with Flurry, and the reason why I like it so much is because it brings the ability more in line with, well, Flurry and Fury are kind of different in a few different ways, but it brings the ability more in line with a specific style. Where, where Flurry brings a dual-wielding weapon more in line with what dual-wielding should be, Fury more caters to the canceling nature of Fury and canceling on that second hit, which is more like player generated than anything. Because with Greater Fury, it's one single hit and you gain 10% increased critical strike chance on your next ability, like the original Fury when people were canceling. And also, if and also, you gain 100% critical strike chance on your next ability if your greater fury critical strikes so being able to force all these criticals is really good and really important to dps rotations so i think it definitely goes in s tier and these two abilities specifically barge two i mean all all of these are great upgrades they're they're definitely great you know late game upgrades to go for if you have the coin um but there are a lot of ability there are a lot of upgrades that are better um, I just think that for the melee class, specifically as upgrades, these three, all of them are very good. And so next, we have Meteor Strike. Uh, Meteor Strike, I think, is the only ultimate in the game that can really, you know, hold its own berserk for a relevancy spot. Because it is an AoE nuke. And I can't really deny that. Being an AoE nuke has a lot of, you know, <laughs> a lot of benefits to it. Uh, if you have like a crap ton of adrenaline, you need to burn it and do a lot of AoE damage. Meteor Strike will be there to help you out. Uh, also, like Tsunami, you get that increased critical chance. Uh, oh, sorry. You get critical hits generating more adrenaline for 30 seconds, which is nice. Um, which can pair well with using an ability like Fury. And it also benefits from, uh, interestingly enough, POF support with the Corbicular Rex, so you can get a buff to it. And it's one of the better buffs uh, from the Ranch Out of Time. So this ultimate is great. It's definitely an S-tier ability. Uh, I think it's the only ultimate that can really compete with Berserk, like I said earlier. Uh, I think a few people would say it maybe goes in A+, because you aren't using it everywhere you're only really using it at slayer but i guess you could even still use it at a few bosses and probably wouldn't be too bad maybe god War dungeon one uh if you're at like bandos or something maybe you could use it to wipe out the minions but i'm sure it definitely has uses at bossing i'm sure you could definitely work it in also because most people don't always berserk at bosses especially if they're learning or they're a little bit higher than their level because they don't want to be taking too much damage. Um, and I think it's a good ability. I think it goes in S tier. So next we have Overpower, which is the, you know, the standalone basic ultimate ability for melee. <laughs> it does a very large, heavy single hit for 100% of your adrenaline. And it's the first ultimate ability you get. Now, now, Overpower, I think the thing is, is there's nothing really bad about Overpower. It's supposed to be like a very low-level 
basic ultimate ability that's going to get replaced later. But while you do have it, it isn't bad. And it does have a few uses outside of it. Um, for example, it's a good thing to use at hard mode Zilliana if you're using melee there. Uh, because you need to finish that with an ultimate. And I think... I think because it's not it's not bad, I don't really know how I feel about putting it in A tier, because A tier is also getting kind of big, like S tier. <laughs> um but it's definitely not it definitely not D, definitely not C. I think I'm gonna put it in B. Not because it's bad, but because it is a lower level it is a lower level ability. It's meant to be, you know, passed quickly. It's not something that's going to be super relevant. Whereas A is kind of like abilities that you're using kind of throughout all of melee. Overpower will kind of get crept out. But it's definitely not bad. So I think it, I think B is a pretty good spot for it. So next we have Pulverize. Um, oh boy, now I... Now the thing about Pulverize is I don't think Pulverize goes in C tier because I don't think it's as bad as Frenzy and Massacre. I think it's actually in B tier. And my reasoning behind Pulverize is, yeah, it's an ultimate. Yeah, it competes with Berserk again. But there is a legitimate reason to use Pulverize. And that is, I guess, if you're a lower level player and you're fighting something that's a little bit higher level, Pulverizing your opponent is probably a safer option than using Berserk. If you are cautious about dying or something like that, you don't want to risk it. Pulverize, it lowers defense. It also raises the affinity of the target. And, sorry, doesn't lower, doesn't, uh, lower de defense. It lowers their damage. Am I remembering this correctly? <laughs> yeah, it reduces the damage by 25%. If you defeat an NPC with it, you gain half your adrenaline back. And it's a big, heavy 250%, 350% ability damage. See, this is why I need RS Wiki in front of me, because I don't remember all these things off the top of my head. Um, but even still, it's a good, def more defensive option for two-handed. Um, but it's definitely not anything higher than B tier. It isn't really super powerful or relevant compared to anything in S tier. But it is better than all the ultimates that are in C tier, and it does have a very, it does have a few very good situations that it can be used in. The thing is, is its description and abilities are kind of weird. They don't really synergize with each other because you're either benefiting from one or the other. If you're reducing the damage, you're not getting that fifty percent adrenaline because the target's still alive. And it's an ultimate ability, so you have to build up the adrenaline all the way back and wait for it to come off cooldown, which is 60 seconds, which is a kind of a long time. And if you defeat an NPC, you do gain 50% adrenaline. If you're bossing, it's not really too helpful. And if you're doing General Slayer, it isn't bad. You could use it to quickly, you know, go back and berserk. But Greater Flurry. Reducing the cooldown of Zerk is a little bit more effective at going into Zerk faster, and chances are building up to Pulverize just to have your adrenaline back, you're not always going to be able to get the timing right. So I think going in B tier is good. It's kind of just it's tricky to use and it's not exactly the best ability. Um so next we have Punish. Punish is like Slice, kind of the same thing as Slice. It just deals increased damage to a target if it's stun or bound. It actually deals more, or has the potential to deal more damage than Slice. And I think I'm just going to stick it in A tier kind of for the same reason. I don't really think I have to explain it too much. It and Slice are not too much different than each other. Uh, the only difference is Slice is just a little bit more consistent, whereas Punish can... Punish is actually... Its ability damage is weaker than Slice, but its shtick is that it can have the chance to hit harder if the target is stunner bound. So, I think, you know, 
kind of similar trade-offs. I think it belongs in A. I don't think it's too much. Um, I think kind of like Whirlwind, Quake is kind of an A+. Lowering your target's defense and raising their affinity, because I got that wrong with Pulverize, because I kind of forgot what Pulverize did for a second. Yeah, but lowering their defense and raising their affinity, it is really powerful, and it is definitely something you're going to want to be working into your ability uh, uh, your ability rotation, probably pretty early, but I do also know people work this in kind of toward the end of the ability rotation, just so they can, I guess, keep doing damage, keep doing increased damage after they run out of Zerk or run out of Adrenaline to keep doing their threshold abilities and build up faster. So I think A-plus is a pretty good spot for it. I don't think I put it in S-tier because it's not like a super powerful broken ability. I thought it was for a while. I thought this thing was really good. You know, being able to lower your opponent's defense and raise their affinity, you know, that sounds like a very powerful threshold, but it's more just a supporting threshold. And... It's not the most important one. There are definitely ones that you want to be using before it, like Assault and Destroy, before you use it. Now, and, and I know Destroy is kind of a weird comparison, but it is more pow a more powerful ability than Quake is. So I think there's definitely a lot of abilities that would go before it, but it is a very good threshold, kind of like Whirlwind. I just don't believe it's S tier. So I think A plus is a pretty good spot. Next, we have Sever. Uh, Sever, I think, going in A is a pretty fair place for it to be. Um, lowering your opponent's attack is, it doesn't happen for very long, but it is pretty nice. You know, you're going to save yourself a little bit of damage, and it's, you know, just a little added niche little thing. I honestly think, you know, actually, personally, I actually think, it's a little bit better than people think it is now that I'm kind of thinking about it because in the grand scheme of things the more often you use this ability you're going to be taking less damage overall and yeah you don't want it to take the spot of something more important but if you can work it in like if everything else is on cooldown taking less damage is pretty good and it's going to save you some food and you know every piece of food you save is you know, you're saving money in the long run, and, you know, it's not a bad ability. Definitely goes, definitely isn't anything lower than A. I think it's an A+. Plus. I think it's a pretty good ability. I think reducing damage is pretty cool, uh, especially for a basic ability. Next we have, next we have Slaughter. Um, Slaughter, Slaughter is a tricky one, because... I think because of just the immense potential that this thing has, I want to put it in S. Maybe it doesn't go in S because it can't be used everywhere like the rest of the things in S can be, or mostly used everywhere where the things in S can be. Um, but I don't know if it's an A+. plus. It's definitely more than A. It's definitely one of the best thresholds in the game. And you definitely want to use it as often as possible. And the as often as possible, but it's not overly broken. It also bleeds have very tricky interactions with things like some they benefit from some things they don't benefit from others. I think I think I'm gonna put it in a plus. If you can use slaughter and walk a bleed on a target, then it's gonna be very good, and you should be using it often. However, there are definitely instances where it just might be harder to work slaughter in to it, whether it's you know a stationary boss or a boss that you don't move very often on. Um, I think A plus is pretty good. I there is I could very easily see an argument for S, so maybe it can go back in S because it is a very solid threshold ability. You definitely want to be using it as often as you can, but I. I don't know. I don't know if it goes in S tier. Um, I'm also, I guess, kind of thinking about the, the greater abilities, whether they belong in S tier. Like, Barge, definitely, but I think I think they're fine up there. I think as far as upgrades, like, to Melee, they're definitely up there. Um, hmm. You know what? I think I'm going to leave Slaughter in A-plus for now, but I might, I might come back to it later at the end. 
I'll make sure. Um, so we'll move on to the next one. We'll move on to Smash. Uh, Smash is used in a lot of just rotations as just a general, uh, just a general, oops, sorry, general damaging basic. Um, it does hit pretty hard and also disables protection prayers, which isn't bad if in situations where you can use it. Um, and you are going to be using it pretty often. I think I'm going to put it, well, I think I'm going to putting it in, it's definitely A or B. Um, I think I'm going to put it in A because it is a pretty solid basic ability. It does pretty consistent damage. And it is something that you're going to be using pretty generally when using two-handed. Um, I don't, it's definitely not overly broken. It's definitely not bad. And you are going to be using it for quite a while. Uh, so I think A tier is fine. Maybe it goes in B tier. Um, but I think it's fine. A is kind of, I don't know if how I feel about A and S kind of being the same length, but we'll see. Um, for B, for B will be Stomp. <laughs> Stomp will be in B. Kind of the same reason Kick is here. It's not bad. It does more damage. You know, actually, now that I guess I'm thinking about it, I kind of want to put Stomp in C because unlike Kick, you need Adrenaline to use Stomp. And you're just doing a stronger version of Kick. And you're not benefiting from any support, like how Backhand is. And, I mean, maybe if everything else you have is on cooldown, you could use it. But you know what? Nah, it, it is a. I don't know. I don't. I don't think it's like super power. I. Eh, I, mm, I don't know. Maybe it doesn't really matter. I think I'm gonna put it in C. I don't think people really use stomp all too much. <laughs> I think people would definitely use kick more than stomp. Um. So this is my list. I think I'm. I think I'm kind of just scanning it. I think I'm kind of happy with how this turned out. I think I kind of agree with it. You know, S tier is like the, like the super powerful abilities, the super just <laughs> the super awesome abilities that you want to be using as often as possible and, and do a lot and really help you out in melee. A plus are abilities that aren't super broken, but you want to use them often because they are just very good. A is just your staple abilities. Um, you know. You're going to just be generally using these throughout all melee. B is your more situational things and, you know, things that kind of start to get power crept out a little bit but aren't super bad. C is kind of like the more bad things and things that kind of need help to set them apart. And then you have Balance Strike because Balance Strike is bad. <laughs> well, um, that's going to conclude it for this tier list. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know in the comments below. Did I get this right? Did I get this wrong? Um, let me know what you think down below. And I'm excited. I think I'm going to definitely make one of these for each of the combat styles. So stay tuned for the next one. It'll probably be ranged. And thank you so much for checking out my video. Have a nice day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one.